There was waiting for President Kennedy at the plane in Dallas, provided by the Secret Service and the Dallas people. A car that was bulletproof, bulletproof, sedan, windows, so forth. President Kennedy didn't want that. He said he wanted to be able to see the people and wanted them to be able to see them. He wanted to be all of the people. And so uh, we went in a regular sedan, open air. I was in, the, I guess, the sixth, fifth car, back behind the two uh, press vehicles. Uh, but wow, what a what crowds lined the streets between Love Field and downtown. Uh, how ebullient, how vital and vibrant and vigorous were the people and their shouts of joy and the signs that they had. So hospitable, so warm and welcoming. Then we were pulling up, uh, going north toward Elm Street where we would turn left right under that uh, bookstore building uh, when I heard the first shot. I don't know what it was. I thought maybe it was a backfire from an automobile. And then the second, and I knew instinctively that the second shot, I identified it as a rifle shot. If you've ever hunted, uh, uh, you, you know a rifle shot. Uh. And then I thought, well, how foolish. Someone's trying to fire a 21-gun salute with a rifle. That's silly. And then the third shot. And it became apparent immediately it was just that much off on the cadence. It wasn't a salute. I knew something tragic was wrong. And we made the turn and faced the front car and could see the first lady and Jackie Kennedy was on her knees looking over the back trying to fathom, I suppose, where the shots had come from. And then there ran up a Secret Service man who hopped into the car and pushed her down. And uh, the car took off. We followed it out to the hospital. But as we passed that grassy knoll where people had been standing and watching as the president's car and the vice president's car had both passed, I could read in the looks on their faces, the historic horror that they had just witnessed. You could tell they, they were traumatized. And we knew something dreadful had happened. We followed out to, uh, to the hospital, and uh, as we arrived, a group were carrying President Kennedy into the hospital building. And John Connolly was being helped. He too having been injured, and within 10 minutes we uh, knew, we were told, that the president had died. There's no way to describe the letdown, the terrible, tragic depths of despondency that it put us in. And there wasn't any way that we could express ourselves that it was a, a deep, deep depression that most of us felt for weeks. Uh, and there back in Washington, Larry O'Brien and a group of the new frontiersmen who had been through these battles with their, their president. We'd been friends together and sat around the swimming pool sometimes together been on the presidential boat together. They were talking and uh, one of them said, uh, uh, we'll never laugh again. And the little blind said, oh yes, we'll, we'll laugh again. We'll never be young again. And I think maybe in a way that's, uh, that's how so many of us felt. Those of us of that generation who had come to respect and revere this president and to appreciate the things he had done for our parts of the country. Uh, 
at a hard time recovering normalcy.